<laughs> Coach Burnett, welcome to the Ohio Cast podcast. This is number two. Uh, you're the number two guest. Dom, Dom D'Amelio, the number one guest. It's great to have you. Coach Scotty Burnett, how's it going? It's going really good, man. It's going Coach. good. It's always, always fun to talk to you, brother. Okay, so Coach Burnett, you are in year number five or six as the head coach at Perrysburg High School. Oh man, dude, I think it's more than that, Zeb. I think Is that it's more. Like, I think like seven or eight. Yeah, I'm really bad with the with the years. It's I mean, and it's it, like it's pretty sad, but I'm like detail oriented with stuff like that. I honestly couldn't tell you, man. Um, yeah, let's just go with eight. <laughs> <laughs> So the eighth year head coach for the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets returning state uh, runner-ups to the St. Edward Eagle in one of the greatest all-time Division I races in Ohio. Six returning finalists. Uh, you are also the co-head coach. I, I'd like to say co-head coach of Burnett Trained Wrestling. You and your brother Eric Burnett are Burnett Trained Wrestling. Along with Jack Gillespie. I would, I would, I would say Jack Gillespie's a heavy uh, influence on Burnett chain wrestling. Would you agree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, for sure, man. Jack's, um, Jack's obviously been a long time, uh, you know, um, coach with Eric and, you know, now, um, with Eric, you know, stepping down a little bit, um, still continuing to coach at Elyria, um, with those guys. Yeah. Jack's been with us for a long time, man. Um, I mean, wrestled for Eric and, uh, yeah. So he's absolutely one of the most, uh, integral parts of our, you know, our club history and just our coaches and stuff like that, for sure. So, you know, looking at this national middle school duels, it's had a lot of roller coasters, but they never canceled due to COVID. And your wife, Jody Burnett was a big part of that. Um, in 2020 and November, 2020, they actually moved the event and they moved the event about five minutes away from your house, from downtown Toledo, which you live about, what are you about? 15 minutes from downtown Toledo right now where you Yeah. Live? Yeah, about 15 minutes south, Toledo. Yep. Talk about how that came to be with moving the event from uh, downtown Toledo Seagate Center, which is now the Glass City Center, to the 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 soccer dome in uh, Rossford mm -hmm. Perrysburg, right? Rossford Perrysburg area, right? Yeah, yeah. So, dude, to be honest with you, man, it was just a bunch of people collectively brainstorming, um, and then just figuring it out. Um, you know, I think when, when, when the group, um, you know, when Dom and Jody and everybody who's involved kind of on the back end, put that thing together, um, when they, when they started brainstorming and talking about it, they made a decision that they thought we could, um, not we, but they could pull it off. Um, then obviously they had to find a space and a venue and, um, you know, uh, thankfully that, that, um, soccer dome I, it's slipping my mind uh the name of the place but it's it's literally five minutes from our house man um so they they networked and they figured that out and um you know they did a really good job man i mean to pull off a major event like that um you know obviously when you know when covid was happening um you know to to be able to um you know, have the trust of people, you know, and then just being able to, and I thought they did a really good job. I mean, they, they, they had protocols put in place. Um, you know, they, they, they did a good job of trying to mitigate as much as you can um, with the sport of wrestling and a dual meet event like that. And I think for the most part, man, um, things went off pretty good. Um, obviously, you know, at that time of, of um, the year, it's in the winter time and it, you know, being with COVID going on, I'm sure there was probably some sickness, but I mean, nothing that I heard was too crazy for people to handle. And um, it's just, uh, yeah, they did a really good job. It was a testament to them, you know, as far as, you know, collaborating and just believing and, 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 and running the event and bringing people together. And, uh, you know, I, I think they did a pretty good job. The event from its infancy, you know, you, I think you've been in Perrysburg the entire time. The, the event's been in Toledo, obviously, Northwest Ohio with the one where it came into Wood County. The, the, the key to that whole thing was leaving the 
county limits of Lucas County into Wood County. And that's how you guys got to have the event there, right? Wasn't that what it was actually? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. You just, you actually just triggered a memory by you saying that. Yeah. They, um, that was 100% what, what happened. And they worked um, hand in hand with, um, Gosh, the dude's the dude's title is it was a, a high up guy from Wood County uh, Health Department. It was um, probably the health inspector. He's the it health was, inspector. Yes, yes, yes. Um, the health inspector dude. Um, I mean, he was there. He came in. They collaborated with him. They, you know, the guy gave insight on what he thought they should be doing, what they should be looking at doing, trying to limit numbers, things of that nature. Um, you know, and I think. To be honest with you, that's why the event, they were able to pull it off. It, it, it was able to run the way that it was, was because people, for the most part, listen, I mean, you had your, you know, you had your people that, you know, you know, wanted to be difficult and not cooperate for, you know, beliefs and things like that. But for the most part, I think people were pretty cool. People were pretty glad that they got to come and, and, and compete. And they did a really good job logistically of, of, you know, spacing stuff out, having mats placed in certain spots and keeping people apart as much as you can. Um, and, you know, I, I, I give, I can't remember that dude's name, but he, you know, that dude was really, really cooperative, man. He, he, in the, in the middle of, you know, of a pandemic, that dude really um, a lot, put his trust in, in people to lead and guide. And, um, you know, because of that, you know, they were able to pull off that event. So uh, Dom D'Amelio is the the quarterback of this event. You know, he's the glue that holds it together. Obviously, Genoa Wrestling and Perrysburg Wrestling um, have competed in the past. You guys compete all the time during the season, in season, but you're different divisions. You're, you're Division One. they're Division Three. Um, a lot of those guys that were in on that championship team came to your guys' club practices. I know that. Dylan D'Amelio, though, you know, he's a starter for Ohio State at 141. Um, two-time NCAA qualifier, but he's a brunette train guy. And I, Dom believes in the brunette train system. Talk about your relationship with Dom D'Amelio and Genoa wrestling. Yeah. So, you know, you, you know, to elaborate what you just said. Yeah. So we, we met those guys when Dylan was young and, um, you know, uh, you know, Dom, uh, you know, entrusted Eric and myself with just um, supplementing training uh, and Dom was really, you know, Dom wrestled and, and, and knows wrestling and, and did a really good job of placing Dylan around people that, um, you know, it, Dom thought were good people and that could take him to the next level as far as just not just one step, but just continuing to evolve his wrestling. And what was really, really cool and what is cool about Dylan is he's just a great human being. Um you know, when you really look at, you know, what our, um, gosh, like our, like our, the BTW brand, like our way we're about, um, you know, it's, it's basically Dylan D'Amelio to a T, um, you know, just being a really good human being, being genuine, um, you know, being a leader, you know, always taking the high road, um, you know, that's exactly what that dude's all about. And, um, you know, and, and he's, he's, it's really cool to see his journey at Ohio state and how it's kind of uh, playing out for him because, you know, he's just, he just continues to work really hard all the time. He continues to um, try to reinvent himself, but also stay, you know, uh, close to what makes him himself. Um, you know, so I think some really big things are going to happen for him this year. Um, obviously I don't have a crystal ball, but uh, you know, that, so with, with getting back to what you said, you know, we were able to work with him and then our, you know, the kids that were around him that trained with him, um, you know, it was a really good group of kids with, with dads that really understood and bought in um, to not just Eric and myself, but to one another um, in a training capacity where they were able to come together, um, you know, train the right way for the right reasons, work collaboratively you know, allow Eric and I to give insight and try to, you know, it's tough as a dad, you know, I deal with that all the time being a, you know, a coach, athlete, father, son, dealing with that dynamic. And sometimes you can, if you're not careful, you can uh, unintentionally get in the way 
uh, of growth and development. So they did a really good job, you know, as a family, um, you know, especially Dom, you know, being able to, to, to get him in, uh, around us and, and, and let us just help, um, you know, so that's kind of how that all played out, you know, and then obviously as Dylan got into high school, it, you know, um, and their program was growing at Genoa, you know, they started doing club stuff and, but they, they, they were all, they always came back and they always were cooperative with helping and, and working with us as a club and going on opposite nights, um, you know, of the club that they established over at Genoa, um, you know, so, you know, and they were really good too, you know, Dylan had some great teammates, man, they, they, they came together and, you know, those championship teams, man, they were good. So it, it was, uh, it went hand in hand. They, it was awesome being able to work with their kids and then they made our kids better. Uh, when you talk about like you guys do a lot of the mat work and you do a lot of the work for the, the donating of the time and table help and all this stuff like Burnett trained wrestling is an integral part of the national middle school duels. Why do you guys feel like it's so important for you guys to lend yourself to what you know is doing and what, what Dom's doing? Yeah. You know, so, so man, uh, to honestly answer that, um, you know, just right off the, uh, off my sleeve, it's just the right thing to do. You know, we, you know, they're for our program and their program to work together. There's no reason that we can't do that. Um, you know, and, 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 and everybody's sacrificing, you know, when you're, you know, our kids are sacrificing time to load mats and get mats over there and, and, and then help unload and do whatever they're, and then they're sacrificing, you know what I mean? So it goes hand in hand. Um, so, so as our coach, you know, and, and, you know, being the head coach of our Perrysburg program and being a guy that's in place to say, you know, Hey, we're going to do this. We're going to help them out even in times when it maybe seemed like it's kind of a pain in the butt, um, you know, to be able to, at the end of the day, to help out and come together and then to have that event um, for our kids in this area to be able to take place and uh, compete in, especially our, our Burnett train wrestling club kids, um, you know, and then maybe selfishly our Perrysburg kids. Um, it's totally worth it. You know, it's worth, sacrificing a couple hours, you know, on, you know, a couple days where your, your kids come in and roll mats up or load mats on trailers. And then you follow them over to the, the, the uh, you know, the venue, you unload the mats. And then, um, you know, it's, if kids, you know, what I'm finding is if you, if, if you do things efficiently, it's well worth it. You know what I mean? So um, we've always worked really well together. Our programs, um, you know, uh, you know, Bob Bergman, you know, he is an awesome dude. Um, like I said, you know, going back to just, I mean, years going back years, even when young, you and I were young, man, just, there's some really awesome tradition at Genoa, um, you know, that area of the state in that division, man. And it's really, really cool. We've collaboratively worked together back and forth and helped each other out. Um, so, you know, I mean, I, I just think it's the right thing to do and, and that's why we continue to do it. So Gray Burnett's wrestled in this event probably six or seven times is my guess. Does that sound right? Gosh, man. Yeah, probably. Um, I'm super bad with that kind of stuff. Um, you know, like, like we were talking earlier, but he's wrestling it quite a bit. Yeah. So my thing is he's always taken multiple losses at this event. Maybe there was one year <clears> he took one, but I remember the year he's wrestling the kid from minions. It was in the Perrysburg, uh, the soccer dome. And he had that yeah, crazy overtime yeah. scramble and he took the guy down. That was one of my, my fondest memories. And then another Burnett memory at this tournament was Nate dog, your nephew beat one of the Ferraris. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, then I, yeah. I interviewed old man Ferrari and he's like, my kids don't lose multiple times in tournaments. They're up at this tournament, losing multiple times in the tournament. I had to get up here and see what's going on. It's amazing. It's competition. Mm -hmm. really good. Gray Burnett has lost more times in Toledo, Ohio than he has in Las Vegas. I want you to think about that. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Am I which, wrong? Am no, I wrong? No, hundred no, percent. Okay. Right. Which, which is really, really cool because it's a Testament and it just says what, just how good, um, these middle school national duels are. Um, 
you know, and just how, it, how good it is for the kids, you know, when you have the right perspective and the right approach, as far as, um, you know, kids, you know, preparing for an event, you know, um, doing all that stuff that goes into that, you know, the little things that go into being ready for something and then being able to go out and wrestle really, really good competition, you know, guys that are just at your level, maybe even better. Um, and then to put yourself out there and, and, and sharpen on guys and then just to see how things play out. Um, I mean, dude, that's ultimately what it's got to be about, not to be cliche, right? You know, and, and trying to do that, you know, with you know, with healthy intentions. And obviously that's tough to do. Um, but now, you know, I mean, dude, the, the event has been super good. Um, you know, I, you know you're, I'm talking about Gray now because I'm his dad. Um, you know, yeah, he just, he looks forward to this one because, you know, you get the opportunity to wrestle guys that are really, really good guys that maybe you don't see a lot, um, you know, and be able to be around, you, you know, you're, you're, you're close to home, be with your club guys, your community teammates, um, you know, your family, uh, you know what I mean? It, it, it it's just, it, it couldn't, it's actually really, really, it's a perfect situation for, for, for gray for Northwest last Ohio time. Kids. This is his last go at it. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's t- time's flying. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's pretty wild. I got wild, the, uh, I got the message today. I, did you send it to me or did, I don't know who sent it to me, but a couple different people sent it to me today. The clip of him and Trukovich popped up again on social yeah. media on a new site, right? Yeah, man. So it, it was me. I, I shared that with you. It was really funny. Um, uh, Alfredo Gray, he wrestled for Wadsworth. Alfredo is now, gosh, I don't know how old he is. Um, but 31, 32. 30, okay, yeah, 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 sure. Probably about that old. So, dude, yeah. he lives He lives out west somewhere. In Colorado. Uh, in, Colorado. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he actually shared it with me through Instagram and, uh, he goes, is this great? Is this gray guy? And, uh, you know, I responded and I was watching it. It was really cool because it was like the singlets were like illuminated. It was like black and white and the singlets were like somebody kind of edited the deal. And, um, I tell you what, I, I hadn't seen that in a while, in quite a while, that little scramble scenario, with Gray and uh, Carter Trukovich from Ashland, and it 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 blew up. I mean, it, it back when that happened and it got it hit social media. I mean, it was. I mean, people. It was bonkers. People Tens lost their minds. Of times that's been watched. Like accounts have ripped it off. I've seen accounts that where it's been like viewed thirty million times, twenty million times. Like if you look at these different rip off Instagram, okay. Facebook, right? Stars of wrestling, some Iranian one, like the like I've seen it like a lot of my stuff gets ripped off like that. <laughs> right, like, right. Yeah, but that's yeah, just hey, yeah. you put your stuff on the internet, it's gonna get ripped off. Um it sucks when like uh you're you you go and you pay the rights to an event and somebody rips it off. But that's yeah. you know that's something that's just out there and it gets ripped off. But it's almost like a compliment when you see something like that get ripped off. But they're highlighting what the kids are doing is what I care about, right? Like, yeah. Whatever. So, you know? yeah, yeah. So, so, so what I wanted to say about that was I remember when that first, when that first uh, was, was put out there and, you know, as a parent, you look at the comments and there was a lot of negative comments about, about really? gray, about gray and Carter. Well, really? in, these, in these, in these regards, they are going to be burned out. These kids are too high level for their age, you know, stuff like that, you know? Um, and I tell you what, it's really, really nice. It's a testament to, uh, you know, Carter's parents and his family, you know, and then, you know, to our family, you know, our boys are still doing really well in wrestling. They're not burned out. They're really good kids. They're champions on and off the mat. Um, you know, I know them really well, uh, uh, you know, outside of, uh, of wrestling, you know, just with the boys growing up through wrestling. And, um, it's really, really neat to see, um, those kids thriving because they're both awesome human beings that come from really good families. Um, 
you know what I mean? It's just, it's just one of those things. Like I remember that bothered me back in the day, like, and I'm not big on getting in there and, and, and getting into a battle with comments and saying, ah, you don't, you guys don't know what you're talking about. I Nameless, just faceless them. people who are basically trolls anyway. Yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That kind of, you know, that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? Um, I just, I don't really do a lot of that, but it's really, really cool to see um, the boys growing into, into young men, um, watching their growth and their development. Um, you know, I, it, it's just really cool. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of, I mean, there was some high level. If you watch the stuff that Carter was doing in that, I mean, outside of gravy and my son, if you watch that exchange that those little guys do and did it, it's unbelievable. The stuff that Carter was doing, I, I mean, switching legs and popping out, trying a Peterson and then, and then trying like a uh, like a standing cement mixer uh, twister deal. I mean, there was some there was some free flow high level stuff happening there. They were six um, years old. They were six years yeah, old. Yeah, they were six years old. They were they were both <laughs> they were both kindergartners. They yeah. they were they were little. They were little guys, man. Yeah. That just that loved wrestling. I mean, if you watch those kids walk around and play, they were little kids. But they loved wrestling. They still love wrestling. Um, and, and they both have had their challenges along the way. You know, I don't want to speak for, for Carter so much, but I, I mean, you know, I, I just know as being young men and navigating the sport, you know, they both take losses. They've taken losses and, you know, they're, you know, growing into a, into a young man is tough, man. You know, you got a lot of stuff happening and life. Um, and I'm just proud of them. I'm, I'm, it was just a really cool thing, man. So uh, this tournament, you guys finally made the gold pool last year, BTW. You made the gold pool when it was on COVID, too, because you guys, I got your M2 match. I got all those matches where you guys wrestled, like, all. you know, you made the gold pool two years in a row. You hadn't always made the gold pool. The gold pool right. here is no joke. Dynasty yeah. Death Row, yeah. they've got uh, – I mean, dude, they've got the the minions. They've got M two David Taylor's club. They've got uh, Young Guns is sent clubs. They've got all these different top clubs that come. California Gold. There's multiple California teams. POWA out of Cal uh, Colorado. What's it mean when you guys can make the Gold Pool, and what's it say about your club when Burnett Train can get in the Gold Pool with all those other top clubs in the country? Yeah. So I tell you what it. Uh, so to be honest with you, our, the, our makeup of our club is a little different. Um, you know, we're a regional club. We're a high level club. You know, we pride ourselves on being able to be competitive and compete. Um, but we're, you know, we really try to provide opportunity to our club kids, you know, the kids that, um, you know, come to our club practices, your kids that live within a certain radius. Um, you know, we try to be as structured as, as structured as we can, you know, when we have interest with our kids, you know, for weight classes, you know, you might have to do a wrestle off and stuff. So we're fairly structured there. Um, but, and this is not a knock what I'm going to say, but a lot of other clubs that have great coaching, they draw kids from and not all of them there's some other clubs that are small you know um you know that 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 have a great following and they can build these great teams within um you know we don't ha we have depth but we as far as like winning gold pools at national events our depth isn't always there um but i but what i think we do a great job and i and i have a lot of pride in is we offer opportunities to our kids to compete where, you know, high, higher, high level clubs may outsource to try to really build a team that, you know, is really going to be in a run and for hitting a goal pool and being in the finals and winning. And so there's a, there's a fine line there, you know, it, and I don't mean that as a, as a, as a detriment. I'm just not that organized. I mean, myself, um, you know, I'm, I'm a head high school coach. Eric's a head high school coach. 
our club is more of a regional club. We have nights that we offer practices. We're not an academy style club, um, you know, where we're offering four or five days a week and it's structured. I mean, you know, one of the things not to, uh, not to be braggadocious or anything, but, you know, Eric and I, we, we just run workouts, man. We, I mean, you could have a, you know, we could have anywhere a five-year-old, six-year-old brand new kid, to a Marcus Blaze, Joey Blaze, national rank guy in the room, and we just run the room. We just run practices, um, and that's not a knock to to people that have multiple practices a night. They do their biddies. Hey, that's awesome that people have that structure and, and they can do that. We we don't really have that capability, you know. We, you know, one of the things I think makes my brother Eric such a great coach and myself a good coach is we we have the ability to work a room and really, really try to help every kid that's in the room improve that given night. Uh, and, and, and you got to do a lot of stuff on the fly. You know, you got to, you, you got to gauge the room, walk in there, you see what's up. Sometimes you might have a, 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 a game plan of a practice plan. And sometimes you got to just like crumple that up and throw that out the window um, and make adaptations to make sure that everybody's improving. So, um, you know, one that makes me the most proud um about btw you know we 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 try to do our very best to be fair provide opportunities to our club kids you know not that we have it outsourced if we have a weight class we can't fill and, and there we absolutely have nobody within our club you know we might do a post and open it up or on the rare occasion you have the you know the uh when you go to the event and there's like the free agent list and I, you'll pick up a kid we've done that a couple times um but you know, hitting those gold pools with the way that we structure our club, um, you know, that, that, that says a lot. And it's not even about Eric and I, it just says a lot about our people and our kids because um, they compete and they fight, you know, and they, and they, they listen to us. And, um, you know, when you do that, whether you're winning all these events or not, you're going to be able to prepare the kids when they leave you. Um, and go to wherever, maybe it's to another club, their own community, their own high school, whatever, they're going to be a leader and they're going to be ready. They're going to be ready to accept whatever comes on the pipe. And I, I'm just, I'm just really proud of that. I'm really proud of your hat tonight. I really like oh, that you're sticking with the Wahoo. Did I give you that one? Is that one I gave you? Uh, it might've been, it's an Under Armour. Under yeah, Armour. I think it's that, it's yeah. got like a, it's, I love it because it's uh, snug to my head. It's got a Velcro back. Um, oh, that's you. That's your jam. The, 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 um, the Wahoo is like rubber. He's really, it's really cool. It's a nice hat. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I think you did give it to me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Hey man, I'm, I'm just trying to be, you know, um, it's the tribe man. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, um, you went to the world series when they, when they, in 97, you were at the world series. I got to go to a game. That I is was, amazing. Uh, that is know, amazing. Yeah. It was, um, my, so, uh, um, a girl that I was dating at the time, her family had season tickets. So, um, you know, her, her parents were awesome and they allowed her and I to go. It was really fun. It's a funny story. I had like one pair of jeans that were my favorite pair of jeans. I forgot to dry them. They were soaking wet. So I like drove to Cleveland in shorts with my jeans, like over the seat, whatever. <laughs> I like, I held them out the window at one point I was driving. I like had them out the window on like, I don't even know what it was, 90 or route to whatever. Parked in this big parking garage. My jeans were like half soaked when we went into the stadium. Um, yeah, it was crazy. It was really fun, though. It was really, um, uh, yeah. And we won. We won that game. Um, nice. Obviously, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't win the. Jose the game, Mesa. But, oh, God. Greg, Craig Council. What a dork. Oh man! <laughs> but I, but yeah, I got but so, my kids the so, team set. I went to a game last Sunday and I got the team set. Nice. Um, there you go. Way yeah. more Wahoo gear than there was Guardians gear. I will say sure. that I was proud of that. Um, yeah. But I well, think I think the, I think a lot a little bit too. Sure, and I think, I, hey, I think it. You know, obviously, like not not to be like it is what it is, but I think a lot of people still embrace the Cleveland Indians. Obviously, the Guardians are getting embraced in, in the way that they're getting embraced, and it's really, really you, 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 
the other day when we were talking and you talk about when, Hey, and this goes, this correlates, I can correlate this to my Russell program here in Perrysburg. Hey, winning makes things better. Winning when you're winning. Absolutely does. It, uh, you know, it brings people together. People, people, uh, get excited. You have a tendency to forget about quarreling and just negativity. And, um, you know, I, I didn't know a lot about this group of guys, this team, um, outside. I knew they were young, um, but they're pretty exciting and Very um, exciting. My wife's been all over it all summer. My wife is like obsessed with the guardians. Yeah. She follows yeah. all the stats. She's a number person. Like she's obsessed with them. So I tell I you what, it. I tell you what too, they, you know, the, the, you know, you know, they got, they got their work cut out with them with the Yankees. Right. I mean, these yeah. guys, those guys are monsters, but five game series, uh, with, with, you know, it seems like Cleveland's got some good pitching and they got, they're pretty defensive. Hey man, hey they slow these guys down. Hey, you, it's not like a seven game series. That could almost be tougher, you know. I have yeah. to beat those guys. Four but if the times. home run train gets rolling for the Yankees, we're in trouble because they hit yeah. a lot of home runs. Oh, yeah, we're and we and, and and um, you know, our, our guys really don't, from what I've researched. So, hey man, they small ball man. We'll see how it goes, right? Yeah, I don't Hopefully. know if you can see the sign over my shoulder. Can you see that? Ah, oh, dude, there it is. Yeah. Man. Victoria, Oregon sign, the 101 sign. No, I didn't steal it off the highway. I would like to, but. Oh, man, that's a great I got sign. it off the internet, but um, we're going to have you back on. We got a minute left here. What was your favorite thing about going out west in a minute? Go. Um, uh, 100% climbing Mount St. Helens. Um, I learned a lot about myself. It was great to do it with you. Um, Gray was there. It was fun to watch him persevere. I mean, you and I aren't spring chick. We're not old, but we're not spring chickens anymore. And um, just to be able to navigate that, you doing it for the fifth time was amazing. Um, you know, just to be able to get to the top of that thing and just be able to look out over the crater, um, I just see the the world from that perspective was really amazing. That whole trip was amazing. No, man, we did well, listen, stuff that we're having you back on for the barbarian hour. Cause we took barbarian bags, but the national middle school duels isn't that. Yeah. So we got to stick with that. Scotty. Thank you for the time. I will talk to you later. I appreciate you. My guy. Thanks for coming. Episode number two, stick around for a little while here. All right. Gotcha. Yeah. Thanks brother.